Hi, this is Remembering the Past, the show where we talk about people who died recently. We've had a profound effect on our history, our society, or our culture. Well, this is definitely the weirdest coincidence we've ever had on this show. We've had a couple. But tonight we're going to talk about Debbie Reynolds, who died recently at the age of 84, and she died one day after her daughter, Carrie Fisher. I sort of short shrifted Carrie Fisher in her podcast. I only gave her about five and a half minutes, but I'm going to make up for it tonight and talk about her a lot with her mother. And you should listen to those podcasts together if you can. What can I say about Debbie Reynolds? Well, let's start off by saying she was a great movie star, one of the big movie stars of the 50s and early 60s, and she was a wonderful talent, one of the best. If we look at the combination of singing, dancing, and acting, there are very few who were her peers. She wasn't as good as Judy Garland. Of course, no one was, but she was in the second level, and there aren't too many, if any, who were as good as her after that. There's certainly no one today who can match her versatility. I mean, when she was 19, she was dancing with Gene Kelly and hanging in there with him. She recorded one of the biggest songs of the 1950s, and she was an Academy Award nominee. And besides all that, she was America's sweetheart. And I have to tell you, like I say, there's not anybody around today who could match that. They don't talk about it in the obituaries about her. She used to joke that later in life she was known as Princess Leia's daughter, and that's really unfair because Debbie Reynolds was a true giant. Now on the negative side, like Judy Garland, like Doris Day, like Carol King and so many others, she had terrible taste in men. Besides Eddie Fisher, who we're going to talk about, her husband's ruined her finances, and she wasn't a very good businesswoman. A lot of her businesses went under, in large part because of her husband's. For all the stardom and fame that Debbie Reynolds had, she was always in financial trouble. But when you get past all that, she was an engaging, witty personality. I don't think she was as witty or engaging as her daughter, but she was great on screen, she was great off screen, and we've truly lost a legend. Let's have Oprah tell you a little bit about Debbie Reynolds. Debbie Reynolds was just 19 years old when she danced her way into movie history alongside Gene Kelly in Singing in the Rain, one of the greatest musicals of all time. Good morning, good morning. When Debbie married 1950s singing sensation Eddie Fisher, the press hailed him as America's sweetheart. Their marriage seemed like a Hollywood fairy tale, complete with two children, daughter Carrie and son Todd. Audiences adored Debbie as the innocent Southern beauty in the popular movie Tammy and the Bachelor. And she earned an Oscar nomination as the unsinkable Molly Brown. Ah, Oprah, she's got to do her little singing in the rain thing. Well, Debbie Reynolds was all that and more, and we're going to talk about some of the stuff she did. But you have to go into the whole Eddie Fisher deal, because they were America's sweethearts. And it was one of the greatest tabloid scandals, if not the greatest tabloid scandal in Hollywood history. In the late 50s, they were truly Hollywood's power couple. Ironically, Eddie Fisher was on his way down, and Debbie Reynolds was on her way up. The only comparable couple at the time might have been Bogart and Bacall. Otherwise, you'd have to go back to Gable and Lombard. And this is as accurate as it's going to get, because this is Carrie Fisher telling it in one of her onstage monologues. So, my father, my mother, Mike Todd, and his fiance, who happened to be Elizabeth Taylor, well, you know, they went everywhere together, right? I mean, they went to nightclubs, they went on cruises, they literally, they traveled the world. So, when Mike and Elizabeth got married, my father was Mike Todd's best man. And my mother was Elizabeth's matron of honor. About a year later, Mike Todd took off in a private plane in a rainstorm. Ms. Taylor was in a state of collapse following the death of her husband in a plane crash. And the following morning, Elizabeth was a widow. Well, you know, naturally, my father flew to Elizabeth's side, gradually making his way slowly to her front. <laughs> He dried her eyes with his handkerchief. He consoled her with flowers. And ultimately, he consoled her with... Well, I think you know what Carrie was going to say he consoled her with after that. Let's look at the upshot of all that. A couple of years later, Liz was on the set of Cleopatra, and she met Richard Burton. And that was pretty much the end for Eddie Fisher. His career was pretty much over. Debbie, meanwhile, married a guy named Harry Carroll. He cheated on her as well, but worse, he gambled away all her money. She divorced him married another guy who wasn't much better, divorced him, she went into bankruptcy. At one point she was living in her Cadillac, but she did have an incredible display of Hollywood memorabilia, which she's tried to put in museums. Debbie handled the whole Eddie Liz thing pretty well. She was pretty cool about it, and she even made peace with Elizabeth Taylor. 
They finally played in the same scene together in 2001 in the TV movie These Old Broads, which was written by none other than Carrie Fisher. Nobody wanted to make this into a feature film, which I think was a big mistake. This is a fictional conversation, although I'll let you be the judge of that. And of course, Eddie Fisher is not Eddie Fisher, he's Freddie Hunter. Fisher's a hunter, and it's not Eddie, but Freddie. This isn't about the costume. It's about Freddie, isn't it? Freddie Hunter? Oh, please. I haven't thought about him in ages. Because if it is, I wanted to remind you, it all happened so long ago when we were so young. Well, let's just drop it, okay? I forgave you years ago. So let's move on. Okay? Great. Good? Grand. Groovy! And besides, everybody knows you're a very sick woman. A card-carrying nymphomaniac. Info! <laughs> Remember, that's Elizabeth Taylor and Debbie Reynolds doing a fictional scene, written by Debbie's daughter. But with that out of the way, one of the things I said before was, one of the things that sort of got left behind was how talented Debbie Reynolds is. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of her career, and they really are highlights. Very few people were as good at what they did as Debbie Reynolds was. I think it's not a stretch to say that her debut was one of the greatest in film history. It wasn't exactly her first film, but 19 years old, she was selected to play opposite Gene Kelly, who was one of, if not the biggest star of the early 50s, and Donald O'Connor, one of the great musical comedy guys, in Singing in the Rain, which turned out to be, if not the greatest musical of all time, certainly in the class photo. Debbie hadn't danced before, and yet she held her own with two of the greatest dancers in film history. And here is one of the most famous scenes from one of the most famous movies. Good morning, good morning to you. Never could be gladder than to be in Louisiana in, in the morning. morning. In the morning, it's great to stay up late. Good morning, good morning to you. Well, singing in the rain is generational. I think it really relates to young people. They like it because it has life. I had never danced. So to dance with Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor in three months, well, anybody else should have passed out. But I didn't, and I just thought, well, let's get started. Love Debbie, but she was fudging her age there. She wasn't 17. She was 19 when that film came out. Debbie Reynolds had some sort of connection with my man Max Shulman. She was in The Private Affairs of Dobie Gillis in 1953, which he wrote. A couple years later, she did The Tender Trap, which he also wrote. She played a character named Julie Gillis. With some guy named Sinatra in it. He'll hold you tight and you'll hate yourself for being single and all what it seems so nice. Folks are throwing shoes and rice. You hurry to a spot that's just a dot on the map. You wonder how it all came about. It's too late now. There's no getting up. You fell in love and love is a tender trap. Debbie Reynolds was also famous for being in the first Tammy movie as Tammy. Her co-star, by the way, was Leslie Nielsen, whose podcast we've done, and she recorded one of the great songs of the 1950s. It was written by my man Livingston Evans, nominated for the Academy Award, and most years it would have won, but it lost to a song called All the Way by that same guy named Sinatra. I hear the cottonwoods whispering above, Tammy, Tammy. Tammy's in love, the old hootie owl, hootie who's to the dove, Tammy, Tammy, Tammy's in love. I gotta tell you, the first time I remember seeing Debbie Reynolds was in How the West Was Won, a great Cinerama epic in 1962. Great stars in it. I was just a kid, but I still remember her stealing the show in that movie. Come, come, there's a wondrous land For the hopeful heart, for the willing hand Come, come, there's a wondrous land Where I'll build you a home Incredibly, she got her only Academy Award nomination as an actress for The Unsinkable Molly Brown in 1964. We just did Tammy Grimes' podcast recently. 
she was Molly Brown on Broadway. They wanted a bigger star, so they got Debbie Reynolds, and she did not disappoint. And she did this number almost 20 years later when she was 50 in an absolutely stunning performance on live television. I'm gonna learn to read and write. I'm gonna see what there is to see. So if you go from nowhere on the road to somewhere, be anyone you know it's me. I'm gonna move from place to place and find a house with a golden stair. And if that house is red, That's one of those numbers no one could come close to today. Again, most years she would have won the Academy Award. The only reason she did it was she was up against a slightly more iconic role by a slightly more iconic actress, Julie Andrews as Mary Poppins. So there's two Academy Awards she would have won in most other years. And I'll tell you, one of my favorite Debbie Reynolds songs is the Abba Dabba song she did with Carlton Carpenter in Two Weeks with Love. This is before Singing in the Rain. She wasn't one of the leads. This is when she was 17. <laughs> All night long they chatter away, all day long they were happy and gay, swinging and singing in a honky tonky way. Abba dabba 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 they put her on television, they tried to make her a Lucy character, but the writing was bad, and to her credit, she gave up on it, and they did cigarette commercials, which she explicitly forbade in her contract. Let's close with a little bit of her and her daughter, Carrie Fisher. You remember when you were uh, just a little girl, you wouldn't uh, ever perform, sing. You, would, you always shied away, and I always said, I loved you to sing, because you have a great voice. But you wouldn't do it. And then um, I w we went to New York, and I did a uh, play called Irene, and there was a song I wanted you to sing called, You Made Me Love You. I didn't want to do it. I did. I didn't want to do it. Stop singing for 30, I finally decided to sing. No, when you did that. Uh, Happy days are here again. The skies above are clear again. So let's sing a song of cheer again. Happy days are here again. All together. As I said, it sounds very sad to hear that today. I'm going to close on that note. I want to thank my producer and IT genius, Sid Tepps, a mother and daughter who had their ups and downs but loved each other very much. Well, as I did with Carrie Fisher, I'm going to do the same with Debbie Reynolds and close with Paul Simon, Carrie Fisher's one-time husband, Debbie Reynolds' one-time son-in-law. Another song that we can read as being about these two amazing women who died only a couple of days apart. There have been a few times when I thought that I was going to lose Carrie, I've had to walk through a lot of my tears, but she's worth it. All I could do is love her, and I wish I No, I will not give you false hope on the straight north today. But the mother and child reunion is only emotional. Oh, little daughter of mine, I care for the life of Remember a Saturday in the course of a lifetime. You married uh, Paul.
Paul Simon, who's a short Jewish singer, and I'm married, Eddie Fisher, a short Jewish singer, and you say you're not like me.